Hey folks, welcome to Rainmakers Live. Get started in just a second here. Give everybody a chance to sign in. And so I'll review the basics real quick about, about what we're doing here. This is only the second time we've done it. So I'm, I'm still kind of getting the bearings here. So the, the purpose of these meetings is to teach you the latest and most effective marketing skills and strategies to make money for yourself and for others. So if you have a business, then knowing how to market your business better is going to pay dividends. And even if you don't have a business, if you can apply these skills to other businesses, people will pay you very, very well to do that. So this is every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, just every week. And it's always the same place. It's always dominatethemarketplace.net slash rainmakers. If you want to save it in your calendar, if you want to put that link, it's always going to be the same link, always going to be the same time. Pretty easy to remember. We have a Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash rainmakers live. If you're not already involved in that, then go ahead and get, get then um, just send me a request and I'll add you to the group. And then at the end of the session, I'm going to add you, ask you to rate it just to let me know what you thought. So let's go ahead and get started here. So let me figure out how to, how to open up notes. Okay, so I got to stop sharing first. The whiteboard, that's what I'm looking for. And here we go. Cool. So it's going to do a little review of what we did last week really quick. So we were talking about the easiest way to get leads for just about any kind of business. And the way that we looked at was like this. We have an ad, right? So we have an ad on, in this case, Facebook. We have an ad that goes up to people and says, hey, click on this to get a free thing. And then they click on the ad. Then they go to a page called an opt-in page, OI for short, an opt-in page. And that, and on that opt-in page, they say, just give me your name and email address and I'll send the free thing to your email. And then after they do that, they go and get a, what's called a lead magnet. The lead magnet is the free thing that you are offering them. And then once you have their opt-in, once you have their email, then you can send them emails, right? And follow up with them as many times as you like. And eventually both the these lead magnet and the emails are gonna be leading towards a sale, some sort of sales process, whatever that may be. But for now, we're just focused on getting leads. So if you wanna get leads into your business, then this is just about the easiest way that you can possibly do it, about the simplest way. And you're completely on autopilot, right? You're just, you put money in ads, you get leads and, and eventually it gets totally predictable. So you can figure out, okay, I spent $5 or I spent $10 and I get one lead. So I spent $100 and I get 20 leads and you can just kind of work it out mathematically. It's pretty easy. So that is the basic system. So today I'm going to get into how to create this step, the lead magnet. And because that's kind of what you need first, because that's going to be what's in your ad is going to say, hey, click on this to get the free thing. That's the lead magnet. The opt-in page is going to say, hey, give me your name and email address to get the free thing. Again, that's going to be the lead magnet. So we have to create the lead magnet first, or at least we have to figure out what the lead magnet is first. So that is going to be the subject of today's lesson. So does that make sense? Give me a, a one in the chat if you're following so far. And feel free to ask any questions in the chat if, if I'm saying anything that doesn't make sense. Cool, cool. Okay, so let me switch over to my screen here. And I'm gonna do this a little bit different than I did last week. And you guys can let me know if you like this format. So first question to ask is, or to go over is what is a lead magnet? So, you, I mean, you kind of got an idea of that. A lead magnet is something that you give for free 
in return for somebody giving you their name and email address. Chances are you're listening to me now. You're, you found out about me at some point because I did this exact system, because you saw an ad of mine that offered, hey, I'm, if, click on this and I'll give you a free thing. And then you went to an opt-in page and it said, and it was probably a free training or a free ebook, a free PDF, something like that. That's usually what I do. And so you, you said, okay, well, that sounds cool. And you gave me your name and email address and I sent you the free thing, right? So the free thing is, is the lead magnet. Now, a lead magnet has two functions. Number one is to, is as an incentive to give their contact info. Right, because people aren't just going to give you their their name and email address unless you give them some reason to do it. Because people, you know, people don't want to be spammed. People don't know who you are at the, at the beginning, and so they're not just going to give you their information for nothing. You have to give them something in return, something to make it worth it. So first function is that it's an incentive, and second function is for the sake of nurture. That is, the lead magnet should build your authority. It should show your expertise. It should show your competence um, in some cases. Now, this isn't always the case. There's some lead magnets that really the only, is only an incentive and it doesn't really do anything other than that. But it also, it builds goodwill, right? If you say, hey, I'm going to send you this free thing, and then you actually go through with it and you do send the free thing, and the free thing is valuable to the person, well, now the person likes you because you've done something nice for them for free. Or, and you've also shown some expertise, right? If you can help, if you need to prove that you can help some, someone with something, the easiest way to prove that you can help someone is by actually helping them, right? And so if you send, give them this free thing that actually helps them to make their life better in some way or to solve some problem that they've been trying to solve, then they, you've built a lot of trust before ever asking for any money from them. So when you go to sell them something in the future, you have that expertise built up in their mind. You have that trust built up. They know they've already seen that you follow through on the things that you say that you're going to do. And so they're much more likely to be willing to actually spend money with you and buy your product. So those are the two functions of a lead magnet. So let me show you what kind of what are the characteristics of a good lead magnet are. And we'll get into some examples in just a minute. So first characteristic is it's free or cheap for you, right? So if you're going to give some, something to people for free, well, it can't be something that costs you a lot of money because then you're just going to run yourself broke. And, and by the way, there's exceptions to all of these. I mean, and like you can think of there's those timeshare salesmen that will give you a free two-day vacation. That's a lead magnet. But it's a lead magnet that's actually fairly expensive for them, but they're so confident that you'll that you, the chances are so high that you'll spend a lot of money with them that it's worth it to them. But for for to start out with, I'm going to recommend something that's that's free or very cheap for you. So something like a PDF ebook or a video training, it costs you absolutely nothing to send them a copy of that. So that works really well. The second characteristic is that it doesn't take a lot of your time. So you can't it's a you can't say I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna paint your house and that's a lead magnet, right? Because that's gonna take a whole lot of your time. And so you're not gonna be able to get very many leads that way because you're gonna be constrained by the amount of time that you have. The third one is delivered easily. You want it to be something that you can send to them without a whole lot of your work. And that kind of goes back to doesn't take a lot of your time. If you're sending them physical in the mail that you have to wrap up a package and send it every time, well, that kind of adds up. If you get like 100 leads, well, now you have to do that 100 times and it's a big time suck. And eventually you're going to be wasting all your time with that. Whereas if you just send them a free PDF that you have an automated system that just sends it electronically without you having to touch it at all, well, you're in a much better situation because now you're unconstrained. You can you can give as many lead magnets as you want and it doesn't, doesn't bother you at all, right? It doesn't affect you at all. And then finally, it has to be attractive to your target customer. 
right? You want it to be compelling enough for the sort of people that you want to eventually sell to. You want those type of people to be attracted to it and to be willing to give their information in order to get it. So let me give you let me give you some examples. Let me start with some bad examples of this. So let's say you're giving as your lead magnet an Amazon gift card. Why is that a bad idea? Let me know in the chat. Giving an Amazon gift card for free is a lead magnet. According to according to these rules, why is that a bad lead magnet? Christian says can get expensive. Yeah, exactly. It's not it's not free or cheap for you. Right? That's exactly right. Here's another one. Let's say a free one-on-one -on -one training session. You give it somebody opts in, you give them a free one-on-one -on -one training session. Why is that a bad lead magnet? Time intensive. Exactly. Julian got it. Yeah, that's going to take a lot of your time. Now, you might have noticed that the personal trainers at the gym do this, right? They give a free training session. And there's, it, again, there are exceptions to every one of these, but the gym owner is probably the one that's offering that. But the person that's actually doing the session is not the gym owner, it's the trainer, right? So the gym owner isn't taking his own time. He's using up the trainer's time. And it's possible that the trainers themselves are doing that too. And that's, it might work, right? Like, let's say that one out of three people who get the free session end up being a long-term client. Well, it might be worth it, but it's still, the, the time is capped, right? And, and that business in general, being a one-on-one -on -one trainer of anything, you're just going to run out of time pretty quick if you have a, a solid sales process. So that's, that's not what I recommend for you here. Here's another example. Free ice cream. Everybody who opts in gets free ice cream. Why is that a bad idea? It's delicious. Probably people like it. Can only do local. Yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> I was thinking like, oh, well, now you have to, it's the delivered easily. Like you have to send them a cold ice cream in the mail and, and also time. Yeah, that's right. So that's, and, and also you have to spend money on it, right? So it's it's not terrible. It's probably fairly cheap. But yeah, you could give a coupon for free ice cream. Like if you own a restaurant, then that might actually work really well. Because the coupon you can deliver easily, and it doesn't take any of your time, you can have that completely automated. And then the person actually has to come into the restaurant in order to get the free ice cream. So it's the person's time, not your time. So that might work. But as for like sending in the mail, obviously that would be difficult to deliver. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of, of kind of what these mean. So let me let me give you some good examples. Didn't bother writing the bad examples because those are fairly self-explanatory. So one good example is an ebook, right? So, and yeah, Julian, you're absolutely right. A free giveaway doesn't educate or warm up a lead. So the free giveaway, it does function number one. It does not do function number two, which by the way, I should, I should mention that function number two is optional because not every... Not every business, this is really going to make sense um, because a lot of like a lot of businesses, they don't really require any nurturing. So if you're let's say that you're a financial advisor, well, you're going to have to you're going to have to do something to get people to, to know you and get people to trust your expertise. So you're going to have to nurture them. But if, on the other hand, you're selling macaroni and cheese. Well, you don't really have to nurture people at all. Like you just kind of, people just buy it. And if they like it, they come back. If they don't like it, they don't come back. So you're not always going to have to nurture depending on what kind of business you have. But if it's a business that requires people's trust, then the nurture step is really, really helpful. Okay, so first example is an ebook, right? It's completely free. 
It doesn't take any of your time. And by the way, when I say it doesn't take your time, you probably are going to have to take some time to write it in the first place. But I mean, for every additional unit that you give somebody, it doesn't take any of your time, right? So you can send somebody a copy of your ebook and it takes zero time for you, especially if you have it automated so that you have an email system that will just send it out automatically as soon as somebody opts in. It's delivered easily, again, can be completely automated, and it's attractive to your target customer if you write the ebook on a subject that is relevant to them, that helps them with something that they would like to do. So ebook is a good example. You have a template, right? Like a just a, a worksheet of how to solve a certain problem. Same thing, it's free, it doesn't take time, it's delivered automatically, and if you choose the right thing, then it's attractive to your target customer. Another example, video training, right? That, this is one that I do a lot. So sign up here and I'll send you this free training on how to do YouTube ads or whatever. A webinar. Webinar is basically just a, a fancy video training. It could be live. Sometimes people record their webinars. Mini course, same idea. Just a few videos, maybe you have some worksheets in there but it's information product that you can add somebody to and it's really easy. But if you're teaching them something that's really valuable to them, then it's helping to, to nurture them and it's a great incentive for them to give you their info in the first place. Another example, spreadsheet calculator. I think these are kind of cool depending on what kind of business you're in. So you could have a calculator that will determine how, like if you put so much money towards your credit cards how, how long is it going to take you to get out of debt? Or if you have these investments, how much retirement income are you going to have at 65? Just something that actually calculates that for them. Or based on the trajectory of the market, how much is your house going to be worth in 10 years? Those kind of things that you can easily set up into a spreadsheet that calculates that number for them. Here's a really easy one, coupon. This works for almost any kind of business and especially the kind of business where the nurture doesn't really make sense. Like let's say you just have a coffee shop and you're not going to send them a training about how to pick the best coffee. That's probably not really going to work because people don't really care. They just want to go buy a coffee that tastes good. So the best way to do that is just a coupon, like come on in and get your first coffee for 50% off or get your first coffee free, right? It's really easy to deliver. And then uh, auto-generated report. This is something like some of the job coaches are doing where they'll, you can submit a resume to them and they will put their the resume into a system that will kind of look for keywords and it's AI generated feedback that will tell you what you can do to improve your resume. Because it's AI generated means that it doesn't take any of your time, it's delivered easily, and it's free or cheap for you. And if it's something that's valuable feedback, then it's attractive to your target customer. So if you can do that, then that's excellent. And then finally, the last one I wanna talk about is a quiz. These, these work really well because people like to learn about themselves. So if you have, let's say, let's say that you help businesses, you have a, a consulting for businesses, you can have a quiz that will rate the business on the five different categories of marketability, right? And so you just have people answer a bunch of questions and it spits out, okay, you got an eight out of 10 on this category and a four out of 10 on this category. And so this is really nice because for one thing, it's, it's attractive to people because they like to see where they are, like they like to assess themselves everybody wants to know more about themselves and how they're doing. And secondly, because it gives you a lot of information about that person, right? If you collect that information, now you know exactly based on the quiz responses, you know who are the perfect target customers that you can best help and that are going to be your best customers and you can reach out to them specifically. So these are just some examples. I'm sure that there are more than this. And if, if you guys have any other ideas that I didn't cover in this list, then feel free to write them in the chat. I'm, I'm curious to hear if you guys have any ideas. But these are all good examples of lead magnets that are really easy for you to provide for the most part. They don't, they're, they're free or cheap. They don't take a lot of your time. They're delivered easily and they're attractive to your target customer. Again, 
if you if you do it right you know if you have a coupon for like 10 cents off of your off of your car repair then <laughs> that's not going to work very well like the coupon has to be enough for it to be attractive the mini course has to be on a subject that they're interested in etc right if you have a course on something that nobody cares about or that your target customer doesn't care about then it's not going to work so does this make sense so far give me a two in the chat if if i'm if you're following and again feel free to stop me with any questions if you like i got a two from christian from Gadima. And I like the new format better. Awesome, thank you. All good. Cool, cool. So I will go ahead. Yeah, the, the new format's actually a little easier for me too. It helps me organize myself a little better. Okay, so next part, we want the right bait for the right fish. That's how I like to think about it. So depend, what lead magnet is right for you depends on who your customer is. Or if you're doing, if you're working for another company, what lead magnet is right for your company that you're working for depends on what their target customer is. Like who is the customer that you want to attract? And there's, in any business you have, customers that like are your perfect customers and then you have other customers that they're like you may not be so happy with so it's best to think of your perfect customer and think okay what does this person want what is this person what is the challenges that this person is facing what are the goals that this person has what are the things that this person is afraid of and then how can you make this person's life better based on that knowledge, right? How can you help him solve this challenge that he's dealing with? Or how can you help him avoid this fear or like prevent this fear from happening? How can you help him attain this goal, whatever it is? So you want something that is two things. One is attractive to your target customer, right? And the more it's, it's, I heard this expression once that it's you're you're joining into the conversation that is already in your customer's mind. Right. So if your customer is thinking about losing weight, let's say, and then you come in with and let's say that they want to lose weight because they want to because they're lonely and they want to get more dates, let's say. And then you come in and tell them all about how losing weight will make it less likely that they get cancer. Well, what you're saying may be true and it may be a legitimate benefit to them, but if it's not what they're focused on, it's probably not going to work as well as if your frame is, hey, here's how to lose weight to get more dates, right? So be attractive in a way that is getting into what people already want. And try to think more in terms of what people want than what people need. Because a lot of times you, especially if you're an expert in something, you know exactly what the person needs, but the person doesn't actually know what they need. And the person knows what they think they need or what they want. And if you connect to them on what they think they need or what they want, they're much more likely to engage with you. They're much more likely to opt in to your sales process because you're entering the conversation that's already in their head. And I love this phrase. You say, you give the person what they want in order to earn the right to give them what they need. In other words, you're meeting them where they are already. And then once they you help them with the thing that they're already working on, then you've built enough trust that you can go ahead and say, look, I know that you're focused on this, but I think if you focus on this, this other thing over here, we could actually solve your problem better and faster, right? Because at that point, they're, they're, they trust you and they're willing to listen to you. You have earned the right to give them what they need. Okay, so we want attractive to your target customer. And then bonus, if you can make it unattractive to everyone else, right? So you get, 
you get something that is attractive to the person that you want, but nobody else is going to opt in for. And there's a couple of benefits for this. Number one is that you're just, you're not clogging up your system with the sort of person that you can't help or the sort of person that is not going to be a good customer for you. Secondly, all of these ad platforms now, Facebook, YouTube, Google, they're all algorithm driven. And so they get an idea, they figure out, they're, they're kind of AI, they're intelligent. They figure out over time what kind of customers or what kind of people are most likely to opt into your offer. And so if you get people that are your ideal customer and you, you get rid of everybody else, well, then Facebook or Google or whatever system you're using is going to get a pretty good idea. OK, I want people like this and not like this. They're going to get that idea because they have data on which people are clicking and which people are opting in. And the people that just skip the ad that don't engage with it, they're saying, OK, I don't want people like this. So if engaging with your ad is the same thing as being an ideal customer, and the people who don't do not engage with your ad are not your ideal customer, then you are in a really good position, right? Because then the algorithm is optimizing for exactly the sort of people that you want. And you are not wasting your time trying to sell people that are never going to buy from you. So let me give you, let me, again, I'll start with a bad example of this. So let's say that you own a Ferrari dealership. And your lead magnet is that anybody who anybody who comes in will get a free Ferrari test drive. Well, that's probably going to be attractive to your target customer, right? Because if they want to buy a Ferrari, then for sure they want to drive it and they want to see what it drives like. But why, why do you think, let me ask you guys, why do you think that might not be such a good idea, even though... It is attractive to your target customer. Give you a hint. Right, it's the second one. It's yeah, Julian got it. Lots of non-customers will want to want a free go without buying. The problem is that that even though this is attractive to your target customer, it's also very attractive to a lot of people who are never going to buy from you. Right? It's it's very attractive to everyone else as well as your target customer. So, and in fact, I think the dealerships, I've never seen this, but I, I think that they actually they make you like show a proof of income or something before they even let you test drive one. So let me give you a good example. Let's say that you have a marketing company that does search engine optimization. So what you do is you help customers, you help businesses get their websites onto the first page of Google and other search engines. A good, a good bait, a good lead magnet would be a free website SEO audit right? Search engine optimization audit. So that's something that, that you have a robot look through their website and say, here's the things that are done well, here are the things that could be improved in order to get more views on your website. This is a good one because it's going to be very attractive to people that own websites, right? But on the other hand, it's not going to be of any interest at all to people who do not own websites. So it's, it's good for filtering for the people that you want, getting rid of the people that you don't want. Okay, so let's do a little interactive exercise here. And I'm gonna give you a few example businesses. And I wanna hear you guys ideas for what would be a good lead magnet for that business. So let's start with example one, a financial advisor. And if you don't know what a financial advisor is, that means just a person that tells you where you should invest your money. So tell you you should invest this and this stock and this bond and this real estate. and Or, you know, a lot of times they'll invest for you. You just give them their the money and then they invest it and then hopefully you get some returns. 
So budget calculator, love it. So what would be some good lead magnet ideas for a for a financial advisor? So Julian said budget calculator, which is awesome. In fact, I had <laughs> I had said the same thing almost. I said retirement savings calculator. I, I came up with a few of my own ideas for these. And there's there are many, many ideas, right? There's no like there's no limit to the ideas that we can come up with here. Anybody else got any ideas? Like, let's say that you have a bunch of money and you want to invest it in something, but you're not really sure how to invest. And somebody comes along and says that they can help you invest. Well, you're probably not just going to trust the first person that comes along. In fact, there's a ton of people that are doing this. It's very competitive. And a lot of people, they they don't really have a lot of credibility. So what what do they advertise that they could give you for free that makes you think, hmm, okay, yeah, that would be cool. I want it. Ebook. Yeah, ebook is great. So like an ebook on what? Like an ebook on how to choose the best investments or an ebook on how to avoid the the biggest pitfalls of investing or how to keep your assets safe in, in case there's another global pandemic, right? There's a whole bunch of different eBooks that you could that you could show your expertise and get people's interest at the same time. eBook, uh, stock market basics. Yeah, absolutely. Stock market basics. That could be the subject of an eBook. That could be a video training. It could be a webinar. It could be a whole bunch of stuff on how to pay off your mortgage. Yeah, exactly. And then let's see what I had. I had some other ideas here. So yeah, I had free training on best ways to invest, training on black swan events. So stuff like a pandemic happening, how to protect yourself from something crazy like that. Training uh, or a PDF on the highest performing funds. Like So last year, these were the top five index funds that had the highest return, for example. Okay, let's try another example. Let's say you're an auto mechanic. <clears throat> what do you give away as a free lead magnet if you are an auto mechanic? And you want people to take their broken down cars to you instead of the guy down the street. What could you give them for free? Oil change. Yeah, you could do that, free oil change. In fact, let's, let's be specific and let's say a coupon for a free oil change. That would work well. And it could be even a free oil change, a coupon for a free oil change when they pay for some other service, right? Because with just a free oil change alone, you'd probably get a lot of free loaders that would never come back. But if it's, you know, get your transmission rebuilt and we'll give you free oil change too, that might work. What else? Discount for warrant warrant of fitness, which might generate further work. I'm not sure what you mean by warrant of fitness, but yeah, discount. I mean, would probably probably go under coupon as well. Free diagnostic check. That's a good one. I like that one. Free diagnostic check. Uh, that's the NZ term for car being up to spec for the road. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. I got, okay. So yeah, like free diagnostic check. That's, that's almost the same thing. Free storage of their winter tires. That's an interesting one. Okay. I like that. I hadn't thought of that, but I live in Florida, so I don't think of such things. We don't have winter tires. Our tires are the same as our summer tires. Okay, cool. 
I'll tell you one that I thought would, would be cool is like a PDF of maintenance schedule. Right. And especially if it could be customized. So you have a 2018 Corolla. Here's here's the dates when you have to come in for an oil change and for an air filter, et cetera. A rewards program for regular service. I like that idea, but I wouldn't say that's a lead magnet. That's more like uh, getting people to come back afterwards magnet. Pre-diagnostic check with a pay oil change. Yeah, absolutely. That That works well. Cool. And here's a, a little bit higher tech idea that I had. Instead of just giving them a PDF maintenance schedule, what if you could give them a Google Calendar maintenance schedule so they can actually just download a little, a little add-in that sets all of the dates, appointments in their Google Calendar for like the next five years automatically without them having to look at anything. It just, it just automatically brings it in. I'm not sure how to do that, but I think it's possible. That'd be kind of cool. Cool. Good ideas. Let's try another example. So let's say that you are a dating coach and you help lonely people to find the love of their life. What do you give people as a lead magnet? What do you give people for free in order to earn the right to continue reaching out to them? Quiz of some kind. Beautiful. I like that. That's actually one of my ideas too. So like their score on the five categories or however many categories of dating fitness, right? So you could give them a score on their confidence and a score on their, their like physical fitness and a score on their clothing style, etc. That's a really good one. 10 tips for being attractive. Yeah. Awesome. For being attractive and so that could be right that could be an ebook that could be a course that could be a pdf that could be a what else that could be a, a webinar anything that's an information product you have a whole bunch of choices for how to deliver it how to design your perfect partner okay i like that one to design your perfect partner. Beautiful. And that could be a, again, that could be an ebook, of course, a PDF, a webinar, et cetera. And this is actually, I like this one too, because one of the things, and I, I meant to say this earlier and I forgot, so I'm glad you brought this up. One of the things under nurture is that you actually expand the desire for the thing that they want to have. And so it, you're not just building your own expertise, but you're also making the person more aware of what they want and why it's attractive to them. And so if you get them through the exercise of thinking about all of the things that they want in a partner and think about how amazing their life would be if they find this perfect partner, well, now your their desire is expanded. They want the thing even more. And so if you have the solution for how to get them that thing, then they're going to be more likely to buy from you. So that's a really, really good one. I like that one a lot. Any more ideas? Dating profile audit. Man, you are you are reading my mind. That was <laughs> that was exactly one of my ideas too. And especially if you can get this to be done by AI, which a lot of stuff, a lot of with a lot of this stuff can just be kind of built on to chat gpt you can have it look you can you can give it some some criteria for what to look for in a good dating profile and then you can feed it a dating profile and say based on the criteria i gave you before how does this look right how would you rate this on a score of one to ten what what ideas would you give for improvement that would work really really well best ways or places to meet a partner yeah absolutely And that's another one that could be an ebook, could be a course, could be a PDF. And that one too, it could even just be a list, right? It could be a like a one-page PDF with with the list of like the top five. 
or top 10. Awesome. So yeah, these are, these are really good ideas. You guys, you guys have got this. Oh, and I missed, I missed Julian's comment. Law of attraction comment. Yeah. Yeah. Anything, anything law of attraction training of any kind, whether that's again, an ebook course, PDF webinar that works really well as well. Awesome. So that should give you some good ideas. And I hope that that kind of gives you the, the first step in creating this lead funnel. So if you want to get a whole lot of leads, then this is a great way to do it. So let me let me tell you what are the action items for tonight. And so I, I always want to give you something to go away with instead of just, hey, here's here's this lesson. I want to give you something to actually do. Because when you actually do the thing, when you put some thought into it yourself and you you use your own creative juices, you remember the stuff a whole lot better. And by the way, I can share this this sheet, this, what do you call it? Google document with anybody who wants it. So action item number one, list every lead magnet idea you can think of. And this is for your particular business, right? So if you were here last week, I had you just kind of figure out what is your business and what does your customer want? That was the homework for last week. And so if you didn't do that, that's fine. But if you have a business, then think about what are the lead magnets for your business. Or if you don't have your own business, then just choose any business concept that you like. Maybe if there's a business that you've considered starting, even if it's only just a fantasy in your head and you've never done anything with it, just it's a way to practice this. Come up with some business. It could be a business that your friend owns, your brother owns, and you could work for that business and help that business get leads. I'm not saying you have to do that. Just come up with some idea for a business that you could apply this to and list every lead magnet idea that you can think of. Step two, choose the best idea and share it in the Facebook group. And bonus points if you give other people feedback on their ideas, right? Look at what other people's ideas are and see if it makes sense for that kind of business. And, and when you share it in the Facebook group, also say, what is your type of business? And what is the idea that you came up with as a lead magnet? And then finally, step three is to actually create the lead magnet. Now, this is only if you intend to follow through with it, right? If you're just doing this as a practice exercise to learn the skill, then you don't need to create the lead magnet. It's enough to just do, do steps one and two. But if you actually intend to use this to get leads for your business, then go ahead and do it. Go ahead and write up a PDF or create a video training or, or whatever it is, or create a spreadsheet, whatever it is that you, that you ultimately choose on, that you ultimately choose to offer as your lead magnet. And I'm going to show you throughout the rest of this little mini series for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to show you exactly how to use that lead magnet in order to get real live leads into your business. So if you want to do that, you have a business or you have a friend's business that you want to do this for, then go ahead and create the lead magnet. And oh, so Will says, yes, please, on sharing the doc. Let me go ahead and get you a link right now. Wait, oh, I gotta name it. Okay, let's say perfect lead magnet training. There we go. We'll make it anyone with the link, copy it and put it in the chat for you guys. Okay, and with the action items, by the way, like I realize that probably most people are not going to do the action items, but if you do, I promise you, it's going to make it, it's going to stick in your head so much better if you actually practice doing it. And so if you're really serious about learning this stuff and you really want to get the benefits of it, if you want to be able to make money from getting leads for yourself or others, then, then do the work, like go through, at least do steps one and two. You may not do step three, but try to at least do step one and two. Uh, it'll only take you a few minutes. Just sit down with a notepad or with a, a Word file and write out some ideas, right? It's as easy as that. 
and it and if you have this as a as a reference it's like okay here are the criteria what do i want to do then it'll be really easy to do this i highly recommend it and then that's it one more little thing and then i'll go to questions and that is if you would please just as a personal favor to me rate the session go to dominate the marketplace.net slash feedback and just let me know what you thought and you know good or bad either one is helpful to me because i want to know and that didn't really there didn't really work as a link did it let me see okay if i copy it from there maybe it works better cool so that's it for me anybody got any questions and Feel free if, by the way, it is, the questions don't necessarily have to be exactly related to this content. If there's anything that I can help you with and uh, related to marketing or business, and then feel free to ask while you got me here. Ray says, do you have last week's session recorded? Yes, sir, I do. I can, let me stop sharing real quick and I will go ahead and send that. Oh, you know what? I made a mistake. I uploaded the wrong video. <laughs> I did not notice that. Okay. Well, I will have it. I'll go ahead and upload the right video. I'll make a note of that to myself. Yeah, I uploaded it and I just realized it was the wrong video that I uploaded. It was a different Zoom session. Yeah, sorry, if you were there last week, I was a little off. I had some some kind of difficult things going on in my personal life and was not all there mentally, so I apologize for that. But I will get that up for you, and I can send that over if you like. But that's going to take a few minutes for it to upload. Anybody else got any questions? Anything I can help you with? Anything that you're curious about in your business, or maybe you're not sure what kind of business to get into and want to want some guidance. Well, you guys are quiet. Okay. Cool. Well, in that case, oh, Ray says, any thoughts on I... Instagram theme pages. What do you mean by a theme page? I, I'm not really that good at Instagram, so maybe I'm the be not the best person to, to ask about that, but what do you mean by a theme page? Following topics like money, et cetera. Oh, okay, I gotcha. Yeah, I, I, I tried to do that a long time ago, like when I was just starting out with marketing, and really did not have much success with that. And yeah, and so yeah, embedding a lead magnet. So if you can get an audience on a page like that, then absolutely the lead magnet is awesome for that because you have a whole bunch of people visiting your page anyway, and now you have a way to actually get their contact info. Perfect. But the the hard part is getting the audience. And I tried that a long time ago. I was not really successful with that. So I'm probably not the best person to answer that question. I think even if you are really good at it, it still takes a, a really long time. So that's kind of why I prefer advertising is you can you figure it out really quick whether or not what you're doing is working or it's not working. And so you get 
you're paying for impressions essentially. So you get a whole bunch of impressions. You're like, that worked great. I'll keep doing it. I'll do even more of it. Or that didn't work. Okay. Which part of my process was fell off? Which part of my process didn't work? I'll tweak that. Then I'll try again. Right. So you get, you get the data so much faster with advertising, which is why I prefer that way. But there's a lot of people that do really well with, with organic stuff like, like Instagram pages. So I'm not knocking it at all. It just, it takes a long time. And it, it may take a long time and never work at all, <laughs> which it seems to be a lot of people's experience with it. Awesome. Well, yeah, I will send out that video link soon. And I think I'll go ahead and wrap up for now. But thank you guys for being here. And I'll see you all same time, same place next week. Bye, everybody.